Uh, he the shenanigans, working stiffer than mannequins. Vader time like a mannequin, mega powers. I'm savage and peep the babbling. Got him shook off the verbal acumen. I'm the main event, meaning nobody coming after him. The topics we be tackling, ankle locking and tapping them. I hate seafood, but I might throw the Boston crab on him. Uh, you know sometimes it gets heated. Uh, you know sometimes it gets heated. Oh, almost oh. went back to it. What's going on, everybody? Heat of Shenanigans podcast back with you with another episode. This time we are discussing some more disturbing continuation of the allegations against Vince McMahon and WWE with current breaking news of Stephanie McMahon and Nick Khan being named as two of the WWE officials within the document against Vince McMahon. So, again, just names of Stephanie and Nick Khan. Those are the two noteworthy names. So apparently Nick Khan, from what I read in the article, um, Nick Khan, it's not rumored that he had necessarily anything to do with it or even knew about it, but knew about it post and would have helped with the cover-up as what's being um, attributed to him. So um, just a fucking shame. So like, so cause, cause I see a lot of people going like, oh, like he was active. It's not necessarily that he was actively a part of any uh, trafficking or anything like that. It's more of he knew post and was working on a cover up. Same with Steph, I believe, cause she was on the, the uh, crew that was supposed to look into the um, allegations as soon as they were rumored, I think her and trips were on it and they didn't even interview her uh i forgot her name but it's sloppy it's looking bad it's looking bad but hey wrestlemania is around the corner so what are you gonna do well, i i want to bring up a, a quote from ari emmanuel anyone who knew or was involved would be gone i'm paraphrasing a little bit but that is strongly to the effect of what ari emmanuel said mm-hmm so as this continues we're about to see what type of man ari emmanuel is with his word Mm. i think i think it's definitely a case of waiting to see where the chips fall in the case uh nothing is set in stone yet uh i don't even believe vince has technically been taken to court for these allegations yet uh so i I think it's going to be a definitely a waiting game i could see it being longer than a year before we even see anything back on this but we're definitely going to keep hearing shit like this up until then and um i don't see ari pulling the trigger pre-trial um but some names i'll be surprised to see if they last a year to be honest with you it just sucks like for stephanie to be the mother of girls and only (laughs) girls Mm -hmm. um here, brother. Kind of a fuck situation if you think about it. And Nick Khan, um, I think at this point he's he's collateral, really. Um, like he was trying to actively help cover it up, but also he couldn't really do anything before to try to stop it because he didn't know before. So like at this point he's collateral, but get rid of him. There's only room for one con in wrestling, brother. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. Scott, what do you think about all this? You're over here proposing everything and giving a layout. What do you think, bud? Well, again, it, it's it's hard to form an opinion when we really don't have all the pieces to the puzzle right now. And we don't even really have the the border to this puzzle. I mean, we know, well, allegedly... Vince is as guilty as sin in right. these uh, accused crimes. But I, I look, you you have to side with the, the victim in, in all of these types of situations because... Yeah, anyone that would sit there and read that case and be like, hey, I think he was just a girlfriend and getting paid off is a dipshit. I got to be honest with you. I'll say that right here. Kind of well, crazy. and... The, the other thing is like you you would much rather be found wrong backing the victim than be found wrong backing the predator. 
a thousand percent because yeah, there's just it's not a winning game when you're backing the accused because yeah, it's it's just terrible. It's terrible all around. Another uh, newsworthy thing that's come up: Brock Lesnar is officially back on the roster page for WWE. Uh, a lot of people, it was rumored he was going to be on Raw uh, this last Monday. He was not. Do we think he's coming back? And what is uh, that about the allegations? So I read online earlier today from Wrestling Observer Radio, as reported by Uncle Dave. Uh huh. Um, there are talks currently within WWE and they're trying to get a plan in place to bring Brock Lesnar back to television. So it's not a matter of if at this point, I think it's just a matter of when. Do you think, and this is only, you know, this is just me brainstorming. If he needed a live performance at WrestleMania, could we at least get R. Kelly on screen to play out Brock Lesnar? Do you think that's a possibility? What is? Uh, not at all. Not at all. I, don't, I don't think I don't think they let you do that when you're in the places that R. Kelly's in. So here's the thing, right? And maybe if you guys know more than me, uh, you know, set me straight. And I don't want to get too descriptive because this is YouTube. But from what I remember from, uh, you know, what was accused of Brock, he was offered videos from Vince of our girl doing this as um, an incentive to sign, right? That was it. It wasn't like Brock was doing the same things that Vince was accused of, correct? Or is there more? Brock well, <laughs> offered her up, or Vince offered her up to Brock as like a play thing, and yeah. her being the play thing was the incentive for him to resign. He basically got to do whatever he wanted to this poor woman. No, if he that he took that up or not, do we? He didn't. There was some type of a weather issue and he couldn't make it to where she was at. Now play devil's advocate. That could have been a line of BS, and he just 11th hour backed out because he didn't oh, agree right. with doing that. That very well could be. We don't know the full circumstances surrounding that particular uh, scenario, but right. I, this would have been 100% worse had he followed through with that offer. Right. Well, I don't no, think he could ever be back on television again if that took place. That's what I'm saying is if that and I'm not saying we don't know what he did exactly. But if that's all that's being presented, I don't see necessarily. Oh, fuck. I don't even know if I want to say this. I can see him being back on TV. You know what I mean? Like until more is revealed. Also, not I hate to bring it up in this context of what we're talking about. What does Brock even do at WrestleMania? Because it seems like a lot of the big matches are being established. Where does Brock fall in a mania rotation, in a mania booking? Uh, I think if he is to return and do something at mania, I don't think it's a match. Because like you just said, we're putting, there's too many pieces in place already for that to happen. You would have to fuck, you would essentially have to fuck somebody out of their mania match right. and tell the crowd a whole different story than what you've already presented to them to this point. I think he will help Cody against Brock if there's any bloodline bullshit. Ooh. And that will be the way they will explain that is that Cody earned Brock's respect through Puerto Rico and SummerSlam and stuff last year. Mm. which is why Brock helped him. Um, that's my thought. Scott, what you got? It's a dangerous game if you put him out at WrestleMania. Remember where this is at. This is in Philadelphia. Those fans would brutally let Vince, WWE, Hunter, anybody associated with that decision have it. And I think it would be a very uh, narrow-minded idea to have him help Cody because that would put some stench on to Cody. How would you be yeah. okay with somebody that has been accused of these crimes and not yet been proven innocent, though again, has not gone to a court of law, just the court of public opinion, where he has definitely been given the guilty verdict. I think that would be a very bad oversight and it would be very tone deaf to do that to Cody Rhodes. So you're saying, Scott, just to have you clear, that you don't think there's any spot for Brock. It's better to just leave it until further notice, or, or, or that particular spot is a bad move. I wouldn't put it at WrestleMania, okay. mainly because 
okay, there are going to be so many eyes on WrestleMania. Too many. So many news and media, more media than normal because of the event. Right. And Brock. Being, yeah. And it being Brock. And where it's at. Philadelphia will, will shit all over this. His music hits, he comes out. If you thought what they said to John Cena at One Night Stand was bad, they are going to let him out. And it's going to completely have a – I can't even put how much of a negative effect on Cody this would have. Yeah. There is, you can have Cena come out, play the safe route. The rocks out there for the bloodline. Sometimes the obvious call is the right call. No. And instead of brought, yes, Austin. Absolutely. Absolutely. But yeah, it's it, like I said, more is to be revealed, and we're going to keep rolling with the updates as they come in. Uh, I mean, there's not much of an opinion to share. I mean, it is fucked up what's going on. Uh, hopefully for the woman in this case, things get solved uh, relatively qu quickly because she deserves uh, justice. Um, yeah, it's just, it's wild out here in these I, I did have one other big thing on this topic I wanted to add in for this episode. Um, with Stephanie McMahon now being named in this lawsuit and in these allegations, it has also raised the question of how much did Hunter know? Is Hunter guilty? I, I would like to say, look, as somebody who has been married and divorced, um, you do not tell your partner everything that is going on. So to think that Triple H 100% knew everything, I don't think would be fair. I can understand where people would have that thought process because they're married. Oh, Chase has to say what he's thinking. He can't just do that. What, Chase? Nothing. <laughs> what do you, he said something about hiding something in a marriage and you started dying laughing. So no, I'm laughing because you're snuggling DDP down he, there and I see it. That's so funny. I, I wasn't trying to that. interrupt Scott. I'm sorry, Scott. Continue with your thought, please. No, I, I was I was just going to say I, I don't think it's appropriate at this time to jump to a guilty verdict of Triple H being involved in this or having knowledge and helping cover it up because we don't know if or any involvement of Triple H existed in this. It, it's hard to say. All right. He's just making noises on his own now. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm sure my brother, man, Chase, is going to speak on this, too. I'm. I don't know where I fall with. I don't know where I fall with Triple H um, because you're right. Not everything that can be exposed in a marriage necessarily. Sometimes people leave things behind, but that's big. That's family business. It's the company he's involved in. I would. I would. I would be shocked if he never got caught wind of it at all. Shut up, Diamond. I. <laughs> well, what say you, Chase? So, um, I mean, I feel like no no marriage is perfect um you know, there's problems always uh i mean look look back at steph and triple h's history why was the rumored reason that christy hemi got fired in 2004 or whatever it was um i don't i just i don't know where to fall because i appreciate triple h for what he's trying to do with wwe he's trying to make them cool and put on great matches and all this stuff again but like if he was involved in any way in this he can quite literally suck it um you're the worst uh yeah it's just it's not a good look for anybody in the mcmahon helmsley regime <laughs> The uh, McMahon Helmsley Corporation is not looking too hot these days, boys. <laughs> it's not. I, I, I'm with you, Scott. I, but like, part of me is like, man, that's a lot to keep under wraps when the family business is literally the business that Triple H is also a part of. I don't know how you keep that from Triple H. I mean, I guess it's possible. But as much as we're starting to hear about these older wrestlers back in the day, it seems like there's a new fucking accusation of what someone was doing in the 80s and 90s. It's tough, man. It's tough. And I know I don't want it to be Triple H because he's built a lot of great on-screen relationships with female talent. And he feels like the bridge uh, to that female and woman revolution. Female sounds gross. Woman's revolution. Um so I, I hope he, he knows nothing about it, man. I really do. 
I really do. For all we know, when they said, hey, bud, you're on the committee to investigate this, he could have gracefully just said, I don't want no part in this bullshit. You let me go book my wrestlers and put on fucking banger television shows, the, bud. The, the thing that gets me is is those reports that Vince was just shooting off text to random people in random group chats, walking into random rooms, like, oh, look at this. Like, that shit's gross. I don't, it feels like Vince didn't really know boundaries well. So I don't know if Vince would have been like, all right, Trips is the one I'm leaving out of this one. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't, I just, I, I can't imagine my boss randomly on like a fucking Tuesday at three o'clock in the afternoon texting me and being like, Hey, look at this girl's naked pictures. Ha ha ha. It's good shit, pal. Like, what? And that's no. something Vince did to very lowly people. He like, went to the the tech he was with the tech people or some someone of that nature in Titan Tower. Titan Tower, like it's the fucking nineties still. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um but he was he was in there showing them all the <laughs> pictures that he had gotten of this woman just for funsies. Um, maybe not. He's a, Vince is a weird cat, bro. You've heard stories of him firing people for sneezing. Like, go back and watch Beyond the Mat. He takes a drink of water. He chooses water. Who the fuck does that? A psychopath. A psychopath. You think he drinks his coffee black? No. He doesn't, he doesn't drink coffee. I don't think <laughs> he's like drinking elk blood or some shit in the morning. Think so. Rat. He's listening to the Joe Rogan podcast. And drinking he's, the blood of the youth of America. That's why he's a million years old and still looks like he's in his 60s. He's, how old was his father when he passed? Was he in, How old was he? I can't remember. I think in his 80s. At least. Oh, well, he's uh, in his 70s, right? Yeah. His mom lived to be like 101 or some shit. So. Christ. Well, I mean, they say the good die young. So. And the assholes live forever. We got another probably about four decades of Vince. He's going to get frozen like Walt Disney, and he'll get thawed out to creep on women of the future. That's tough. That's tough. Just horrible human being. The well, character, Mr. McMahon, and the person, Mr. McMahon. Terrible, terrible guy. Bad guy. One in the same. Yeah. yeah. Well, guys, do you have anything you want to add into this episode before we uh, wrap this one up? I don't. I don't think. Well, well, I'm sure we'll get news within the next couple of weeks, and we'll be back to talk about it. Until then, you know it. You know what we think. Fuck Vince. It's fun. To, it's fuck Vince McMahon every day. Yeah, that, that's what the holiday it is. And Hulk. <laughs> yeah, fuck that guy too. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that's gonna do it for this episode of Heated Shenanigans Podcast. Everybody, thank you out there for watching, listening, supporting. We appreciate you. Everybody, have a great week. Stay.